In this video, we are going to determine the equation of the sine function based on the amplitude and the period. Well, first of all, consider the general form of a sine function that does not have a phase shift in it. Uh, it goes like this y equals a times the sine of bx. All right, if there's no phase shift, this is what we've got. Um, now, the a value is going to tell us the amplitude. All right, uh, the amplitude will just be the absolute value of a. But the b value is going to give us the period um, using this little equation that the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. Okay, so if I want an equation that has an amplitude of 3, then for starters, I could say y equals 3 sine of whatever comes next. Um, now, I could have put a negative 3, and it would still have an amplitude of positive 3. Now, um, they're giving us the period is pi over 6. Okay, now, using this formula right here, I'm going to take the pi over 6 and put it in for p. So that would be like this. Pi over 6 should equal 2 pi over b. Now, there's more than one way to solve this little equation, uh, but one way would be to cross multiply. So if we cross multiply right now, um, I would make a new equation by doing b times pi. Okay, so it's pi b. And then I would multiply these together for the other side. So that's going to be 12 pi. All right, and if I divide both sides by pi now, that's going to give me that b is equal to 12 because the pi's will cancel out. Um, so that means uh, the b value is going to go right in here. So this will be 12x. And there would be my equation. All right, let's go ahead and look at number 8. Um, if the amplitude is 6, all right, that tells me that the a value is going to be 6, or it could have been negative 6. <clears throat> if the period is 3, um, that means that, uh, remember that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by b. And I need to find that b value. So if the period is 3 pi, that means 3 pi is equal to 2 pi divided by b. Okay, um, now I could cross multiply again, um, or I could use another thing that we've learned, which is that if, when you have a single thing equal to a fraction, a quick way to solve for the denominator is that you can swap these two. The b and the 3 pi can sort of trade places. Um, so this will become b is equal to 2 pi over 3 pi. So the pi's cancel out, so I get b is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so let's file that away. So b is equal to 2 thirds. All right, so now we're ready to write the equation. So y is equal to 6 sine 2 thirds x. All right, and uh, for number 9, the amplitude is 2. That means a could equal 2 or negative 2. If the period is 10 pi, that means that 10 pi is equal to 2 pi over b, because the period is always equal to 2 pi over b. Um, this would be another convenient one to just swap these two. So that's going to give me that uh, b is equal to 2 pi over 10 pi. The pi's cancel out, and uh, 2 over 10 reduces down to 1 fifth. Um, so the bottom line is b is equal to 1 fifth. 
So we could write the equation y is equal to 2 sine 1 fifth x. And for number 10, wait, almost forgot to put a box around it. For number 10, amplitude is 5. <clears throat> that means the a value could equal 5 or negative 5. The period is 3 pi. Now we already saw on problem number 8 that when the period is 3 pi, the b value is 2 thirds. So no need to do that over again. So the b value is 2 thirds. Um, so we could write the equation. y is equal to 5 sine 2 thirds x. Okay, how about number 11? Amplitude is 4. That means the A value could be 4 or negative 4. Um, the period is 8 pi. Now we know the period is always equal to 2 pi over B. So that means that 8 pi is equal to 2 pi over B. Now we can swap these and that's going to give us that um, B is equal to 2 pi over 8 pi. Now these pi's cancel out and 2 over 8 reduces down to 1 fourth. Alright, so our B value is going to equal 1 fourth. So the equation becomes Y is equal to 4 sine 1 fourth X. Okay, and again, uh, we're given the amplitude, so that means the A value could be 3 fifths or negative 3 fifths. Um, for the period, the period is always equal to 2 pi over B. Alright, so pi over 3 must equal 2 pi over B. Now, when you have a fraction equal to a fraction, usually the easiest thing to do is to cross multiply. So I can make a new equation using the diagonals. So this will be pi times b using this diagonal. And looking at this other diagonal, multiplying, I get 6 pi. <clears throat> um, to get b by itself, I'm just going to divide by pi. So that leaves me with b is 6. Okay, so my b value is 6. So our equation is y is equal to 3 fifths. Um, whoops, I forgot the sign. Um, sine of 6x. Just put the b in there. And there you go. Okay, the cosine function is going to work the exact same way. So all we really have to do is find the b value and write the equation. Um, so if the period is 2 pi, that tells us that 2 pi must equal um, 2 pi over b. All right, swapping these gives us that b is equal to 2 pi over 2 pi, um, which lets us know that the b value must equal 1. And we already knew that from the beginning because we know that um, the standard period is 2 pi. And so that would only happen if the B value was 1. Um, so when you go to write the equation, it's going to be like this. Y is equal to 1 half, all right, because of the amplitude, uh, cosine X. All right, normally I'd put a number here for the B value, but this time it's 1. So I would just leave it like this.
All right, similarly, number 14, um, let's find that b value. So 4 pi must equal 2 pi over b. If I swap these, then I get b is equal to 2 pi over 4 pi. All right, which tells me that b, the pi's cancel out and I have 1 half. So my equation is going to be y is equal to 7 cosine 1 half x. All right, there's my amplitude and my b value. All right, so for number 15, the... Um, the period always equals 2 pi over b. So I can swap these, and then I get b is equal to 2 pi over 6 pi. Now those uh, pi's are going to cancel out, and I'm going to get that the b value is 1 third. So now I can write the equation. y is equal to 2 thirds, because of the amplitude, cosine 1 third x. There's my b value. All right, number 16. All right, the period. always equals 2 pi over b. When you have a fraction equal to a fraction, <clears throat> the easiest thing to do is cross multiply. So that's going to give us 8 pi b, all right, from that diagonal. And this diagonal will give me 6 pi. Okay, now I need to divide both sides by 8 pi trying to get b by itself. All right, so that leaves me with b is equal to, all right, because these cancel out, of course. Um, pi's cancel out, and 6 over 8 reduces down to 3 fourths. So now we can write the answer. y is equal to 1 fourth cosine of 3 fourths x. All right, just put my amplitude in there and my b value here, and that's it. Okay, what about number 17? All right, well, we know that b value, um, the period, is always equal to. Um, 2 pi over b. So if this is the period, then that period should equal 2 pi over b. Okay, when you have a fraction to equal to a fraction, I would cross multiply. So along this diagonal, I have pi b, and along this diagonal, multiplying gives me 8 pi. So then I'm left to just divide both sides by pi. All right, and that tells me that b is equal to 8. So I'm ready to write the equation now. Wait, I thought that was going to be blue. So the equation is y is equal to 6 cosine um, 8x. All right, just put in my amplitude and my b value. And there you go. All right, and number 18. I think this is the last one. Just looking down to check. All right, number 18, last one. Okay, the period is always equal to 2 pi over b. 
All right, I'm going to cross multiply on this one. So along this diagonal, I have pi b. And along this diagonal, I have 4 pi. To get b by itself, I just need to divide both sides by pi. And that tells me that um, b is equal to 4. So now I'm ready to write the equation. y is equal to 11 cosine of 4x. Just put my amplitude in there, and I put my b value right here, and that is it. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful. I will see you on the next video.